Welcome back to Talk Ottawa. We're going to continue talking about transit on a couple of other fronts. Uh, let's start with the deal that was negotiated with the Amalgamated Transit Union, which basically means there will be labor peace. There won't be another bus strike. I think everybody is pretty happy about that. But, but the, some people have also raised the concern that maybe labor peace was bought at too high a price. So uh, let's look at uh, this deal and what the city uh, gives up in this deal uh, and why you think it was a, f a fair deal or perhaps you perhaps you think the city gave up too much but what do each of you think about it well i think it's a fair deal that uh, respects uh, inflation in fact below inflation uh, i think it's consistent and within the ballpark of other agreements that have been negotiated uh, in the province of ontario uh, having sat around the council table uh, when we went through the strike it was very painful uh, for the citizens and the businesses of our city um, we were very hard hit by that, and I think uh, a lot of residents wanted us to work positively with the union to come up with a fair deal, and I think we've done that. I have heard people uh, say, well, other levels of government are coming in at different uh, rates. Well, these are levels of government that have the ability to really legislate uh, uh, rates of pay. The province, the federal government, uh, they have ability to do that. The city does not. So we are in a position that we... Uh, have to negotiate our way to a deal and I think we've done that successfully and one that is affordable to the city and ensures that we have labor peace and avoids uh, a very very costly strike not just in terms of the impact on the citizens but uh, their pocketbooks as well. But increasing wages by more than two percent a year over four years is higher than what's happening at the federal government and what's happening in other places and, and many people would say in the private sector as well. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you have to look at it uh, in the context of, of um, you know, the agreements that the city is making and our commitment to keep, um, you know, our costs, our taxes, um, you know, below 2.5%, below rate of inflation. I mean, I think this agreement is in keeping in that regard. But at the same time, um, you know, your, your uh, question about, you know, uh, are we buying peace? I think there's been a change, there's been a shift in the... the um, the tone with which uh, communication happens between uh, the drivers and the mechanics, the unions and, and the city. Uh, and it's been a positive change. I mean, this is the first time in over 20 years that uh, we've reached an agreement before the agreement expired, uh, which I think, you know, bears obviously, um, you know, it's a good omen for a positive relationship for the future, which, which benefits us all. There is some value to that, and, and, and there are lots of positive signs to that, although some people would also say if you reached a deal before the last deal ran out and there wasn't uh, you know, more of a, a game of brinksmanship going on, that uh, that means you gave up too much, that uh, the drivers and mechanics, the union members, uh, might have settled for, for less than that if you'd, if you'd stretched it out a little further. What do you say to that, Councillor Shirelli? Well, if they're saying that, they're wrong. <laughs> okay. the, look, we, we have two, two look, things you need to look at. If the people who are saying that got their ultimate dream, what type of settlement would they be looking at? Half a percent less? Maybe. So you look at what you're getting for that half a percent. First of all, you're coming in in the middle of the pack across Ontario in terms of settlements for tra in transit. So we're not on the high end, we're not on the low end, we're right in the middle. But we're, we're at a, a fresh point at OC Transpo where we have Mr. Mancone coming in uh, taking the reins. He's making a huge effort to build employee morale and to build a relationship between management and the employees and he's making great ground on that and if we can reach an agreement before things become hostile and help build better morale at the organization that's going to be better for everyone who's a transit user and it's going to be better for taxpayers in the city. And people will get to look to the next four years for the first time. They get to look four years in advance and say there isn't going to be a strike in the next four years. And we're going to pay an average increase to our employees. And I think if you ask people would they take that deal, if you asked them that a couple of years ago, they would have said sure. And so I think it's a great deal. Now, uh, there's been a lot of focus on uh, the uh, the labor, uh, on the uh, on the wages in this mm -hmm. agreement, but there are other elements of it as well. So on the scheduling issue, what exactly has the city agreed to here in in this new deal? Well, we maintain 
uh, management right to, to control scheduling. And uh, that's important, but there's going to be more of a cooperative type of uh, setup with the employees. So we start to meet some of their needs while still maximizing what we need to do in terms of scheduling. So uh, we're not going to run routes that make no sense just uh, you know, to ensure that, that certain scheduling imperatives by the union are met. But we're going to run routes that make sense in terms of transit while at the same time accommodating you know, some, of, some of the concerns. Mr. Mancone has the personality that meshes beautifully with, uh, with what our needs are at this time. And I think by endorsing what he's doing and supporting this settlement, uh, we're going to have a much better OC Transpo in four years than we had two years ago.